I think if I'm writing something that feels truthful um, and sort of electric and a bit dangerous because it feels truthful, um, then I just, my hope is that it will land in the same way with other people as well. An audience makes themselves so vulnerable and open to you when, when they're laughing or when they allow you to make them laugh that's, um, that's when they trust you foolishly. I think the depth of knowledge of a character is definitely, uh, when you write it yourself, <clears throat> is undeniable. Writing for me and writing these characters for me is like how I do that. So I write women who don't give a shit because I'm teaching myself how to be one. I think it makes us uh, feel a bit closer to her that you see other people um, being spiky with her and she still continues and she still asks the questions and she still pushes. Sometimes you need to go so far away from the thing you're making to, um, to get the most um, perspective and inspiration on it. As an audience myself, I just I only ever want to be surprised in a truthful way, not in a kind of like, uh, <laughs> but I, I want to I want to be as surprised as much as people surprise me. You know, people surprise each other all the time. Really authentic at the beginning, and I and I wrote as originally a play was the humour and yeah. the and the turns of phrases that that particular character would have because that's the kind of stuff that was cracking me up at the time and the stuff that I hadn't really seen that much in a character and I, and I also knew that that's a character I wanted to play and that so that humour, the jokes and a lot of the kind of anecdotal stuff I had amplified from my own life or stuff that had funny, or embarrassing happened in my own life and then weaved a dramatic story out of that. That happened to me. That was embarrassing. That happened to me. That was embarrassing. All on <laughs> post-it notes and then cranked <laughs> them all up so they were like painfully mm -hmm. humiliated and then found a story within them. Basically trying to disarm an audience as much as you can with comedy and then um, really punch them in the gut with the drama <laughs> as uh, when they least expect it. And I think an audience makes themselves so vulnerable and open to you when, when they're laughing or when they allow you to make them laugh that um, that's when they trust you foolishly. When I was um, really worried about not having a story for, this, for season two and it not being as good as season one and being, I mean, I was so, I mean, I honestly really did try and like back out <laughs> a couple of times. I, and, you know, everyone was um, very supportive and enthusiastic and also would really listen to the fears of that. And, uh, and actually I took a lot of, um, I took a lot of inspiration from how the, the one, uh, how Godfather then like upped its game for Godfather 2. I mean, that mm. sounds sort of ludicrous, but actually sometimes you need to go so far away from the thing you're making to um, to get the most um, perspective and inspiration on it, because if you're watching things that are sort of similar the whole time, then you f sort of feel a bit cornered and um, by style. And so that was that was really that was really helpful. For me. Well, what I love about this season is that we find her at a pretty healthy place. Whereas last season, I mean, she's still a little a little broken, a little damaged. Whereas last season, she was completely destroyed, and that's where we found her. In this one, she's actually doing better in a way than everybody else around her what do you think made that brought the camera back why did that bring the camera back well i don't think it ever really went away i just think that she um she'd kind of a, a, had a different relationship with it i think in the first one the the pressure of the camera was that she had a secret and the camera and she felt like she was going to crack under the pressure of the camera saying like in my head it was the camera going there's something going on with you what is that and she's going hey, i'm just hilarious come into my hilarious life there's nothing wrong with me i swear and then at the end you know there's that relationship where she pushes the camera away and this time i think it was um it came she doesn't know why it's there this time i think last time she knew why it was there and this time i don't think she knows and which means she knows that there's a journey she's going to go on there's another thing she has to learn about herself but this time she's not aware of it so uh, so it's a different kind of relationship. For better or for worse, how do you wish you were more like your character? Fleabag says what she thinks, whether it's to the camera privately or in real life. She says what she really, really thinks in the moment. And I think I'm still learning how to do that. Mm. Uh, there are so many things in the way, um, like fear <laughs> in the way of... But also, like, the more like, you become in the public sphere as well, you just start checking yourself all the time because you can hear how people can fuck with your words. And I think... <laughs> But so that's why writing for me and writing these characters for me is like how I do that. So I write women who don't give a shit because I'm teaching myself how to be one. But yeah, I feel such a catharsis when I do turn to the camera and just like say that fucking line. Yeah. And then oh, it's just such an amazing feeling. Why do you think Fleabag resonates with so many people? I find this question really hard to answer because um, I only know why I uh, wanted to write her and my reactions to it as it was coming out and the kind of fire in me when I was writing it of just, what if you say this? What if you do this? Well, I, have, I don't feel like I've seen this perspective of 
um, a woman's experience here. Like, even if it comes down to a haircut, it's just sometimes I'd be like, I would love to see that. I would love to see that kind of scene. I would love to see um, a miscarriage being dealt with in a way that, you know, in the, you know, I've heard stories in the real world um, of people having miscarriages with friends and things. And then I'd seen things on TV or read things in fiction versions of it and they hadn't always completely aligned to what my friends experiences were and so it's that kind of thing I think if I'm writing something that feels truthful um and sort of electric and a bit dangerous because it feels truthful um then I just my hope is that other, it will land in the same way with other people as well in the last one she's um uh because that, that sense of she's running from something, but she's hiding something. So she had to kind of be mean and be funny to distract you from the truth. And I think this one, it's again that same thing that, you, that the audience know her secret. So the relationship with the audience is a bit more, um, a bit more delicate. She's a bit more, there's a bit of shame in there. And there's a bit of, I don't know, and I'm working that out, actually, literally looking at the camera and working out what that relationship was. Because I knew very much in the first season, it was, hey, come in, this is going to be fun. And this one was a bit like, so you know that I'm a terrible person. <laughs> and uh, come, come in and see, see my life. And I think it makes us uh, feel a bit closer to her that you see other people um, being spiky with her and she still continues and she still asks the questions and she still pushes. Um, I mean, I, I don't find her unlikable at all <laughs> and I was worried you know I was worried that if people didn't see her pain underneath it all and that her her attitude was just kind of dismissive and she just you know didn't didn't seem to care like she, that's clearly what she's trying to make you think but if it if we were too convincing and she just didn't care and she was just being a dick <laughs> then I think that would justify that but I think we were careful to build in as much humanity as possible. You know, each new writing night, we'd give a brief to the writers, which were to challenge one thing in the audience, like make an audience fall in love with the character, make an audience forgive a character of a heinous crime, or like find something that makes an audience laugh and then makes an audience feel sick for laughing. And we used to do these monthly, and I learned so much there about how to surprise your audience. Because as an audience myself, I just I only ever want to be surprised in a truthful way, not in a kind of like, uh, <laughs> but I, I want to... I want to be as surprised as much as people surprise me. You know, people surprise each other all the time. And, and I think with Claire, you know, she's the one I have most fun with, really, the sister character, because the more you think, oh, this is where Claire would be sort of classically anal about something, and it would be in those moments when I'd be like, but that's where you switch it. And that's when she's actually quite cool about something or she finds something funny. Scenes, jokes, I have ideas, but they're just fitting them together. I think if you have enough that you can write them on post-its and write them on your wall and just put them together. Because I think I've never thought structure first. I've always thought material first. And I think you're the same, aren't you, Vix? And, mm. and it's how we operate so much. Material first, jokes first, character first. And then we just put them all on the wall. Um, and then, honestly, just the game of what if you put this next to this? And usually the more unusual that pairing is of those scenes or those scenes that you put in an episode, the more interesting it is. It comes with something, something happens when you put two things that should be together, and then you start pulling a story out of that. This is probably really bad advice, because I know you're supposed to structure first, and then you send, send it to your commissioners and go, this is the structure of the episode, and, then, and just send like a screwed up post-it note going, that's out. Um, but um, but that, that really, really helped, was that, was just, just knowing that you're, as long as you're enjoying writing those scenes, then, then once you've got enough, then start playing with it. I think the depth of knowledge of a character is definitely, uh, when you write it yourself, <clears throat> is undeniable. I felt when I was, you know, I was in my mid to late 20s when I first wrote the play, and it came out of a need to play someone who was complex and weird and had these multiple layers and had, a, and had a persona and then had somebody truthful underneath and had all that complexity. But it was also it was funny and dark and sort of sexually candid. All of those things were things I desperately wanted to play as an actor actor anyway and I'd felt the pressure coming out of drama school to basically be a sort of princess mm. um uh, either like a sexy princess or a not sexy princess that was like the two <laughs> things and like and in one way or another she's a princess you know no matter what the story is um and so I wanted to play someone who was a kind of a darker version of that what has it been like developing these two characters with each other I mean from the first season to this season Sorry, you were so in love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been amazing. Sean and I have known each other for a really long time. We were at drama school together, and we always had a fantasy of playing sisters. So to be able to do it on our own terms as well has been really fun, because it means every single time we have an idea, or even sometimes a little moment just happens between us, we're a bit like, going in. I, I don't know that I'll ever have the kind of creative freedom that I have with Phoebe, just because of the way that we... I mean, we just trust each other so much. There's so much room for failure without embarrassment, and that's... 
uh, you you can't you can't get that on, in another environment. As writing came along, again, it's really instinctual with me, and I think I feel the power of writing something and having that control over it and being able to author a story and know that you're inviting an audience in with the promise that I'm going to take you on a journey and it's going to be worth it. And I think that is is a experience I. I feel like I, I might have as an actor now if I get the, those bigger roles, but back when I wasn't, it was the smaller roles and I didn't have that feeling of like, I want to take people on a journey. And um, so that was really driving me uh, the last few years. And then also writing stuff just came along more. I uh, obviously have to ask, before we go to um, questions from the audience, um, I want to ask about the fourth wall. We should always ask about the fourth wall when it comes to um, Fleabag. Um, the interesting part of this entire uh, story is that it is noticed by somebody. It is noticed by the priest, who is also himself slightly fourth walling up to God. Um, and uh, there have been various theories around who it is. Did you have an, do you have a fixed idea as to who it is, Phoebe? Or um, I love the idea that people can interpret it how they like. Um, I, it's, it's, it's as open in my mind, I think, as it, as it as it could be i felt like it was symbolic of something that i can't really explain for me it was never a certain person but um but i love that for some people it is that but i feel like it's that pressure of being watched and feeling watched and feeling like you're not if you're not being witnessed does what what you're doing count for anything does it matter yeah. But then the flip side of that is that if you're constantly witnessed, then you can never really, you're too frightened to, um, to, to slip up or let someone see you be vulnerable. So she's constantly grappling with this need for the audience to be there to validate her and also to leave her alone so she can experience things on her own. Um, and I think that's, and, and for, for me, it was, it was yeah, it was, it was more about that. And the same with him, like constantly questioning you know, there's something, there's a pressure on him the whole time, asking him if he's a good person. And for her, it was that same pressure, whether that's society or boo, or whoever anyone wants it to be. It's, um, it, it, it's and it's, it's a really fraught, wrought relationship um, that I think was why it was so um, important for her to be able to let it go in the end. I think in the last series, she she wasn't searching for anything, actually. I think she was running from something in the last one. And it was a constant fight to just not... I don't think she was thinking about what the future was going to hold. I think it was just don't let the demons from the past catch up. Mm. And and I think when people would hurt her or she'd hurt other people, it was just, you just get up and keep going to, to stop it from happening. She comes out into the world fighting. She wants to be funny. She wants to entertain you. She wants you to have a good time. But also, she desperately wants to connect. And I feel like we can all relate to that to a certain degree. But she's still outrageous and horny and busy and tired, you know, like the rest of us. Having written both comedy and drama, which do you find uh, easier or more enjoyable? And if for the rest of your life you could only do one or the other, <laughs> which would you choose? <laughs> oh, no. I don't think I could, because I think they're so intrinsically linked. I feel like... If there's comedy, if people are laughing, they're kind of giving you their heart a bit. So they're sort of asking you to break it in some way, I think. Because <laughs> they're, they're it's, I don't know. I just feel like they're, they're, they're too closely entwined. I found it, so sort of during, com when I was writing Fleabag and Crashing, I was like, I just want to write a fucking drama. I hate this, like, on the, having to do a tick thing on the page of like, there's like six jokes on this page and it having to be about generating material and jokes. Was exhausting but now I'm writing a drama I'm like I just want to put a joke in everything it's like, it's like how do I know if it works or how do I know where's the humanity I think finding the humanity in drama for me is, is has been uh, an interesting journey because I think people being funny or jokes uh, reveal so much so quickly about a character but people staring meaningfully down a corridor um, and then walking with absolutely no sense of humour to go and sign a form. I'm like, <laughs> like what's fun about that? <laughs> but, um, but it's important. So I, I don't, um, I don't know. There is, there, I ha there's a lot of humour in the drama that I'm writing. So um. I, I relate deeply, really deeply to this character. She's very personal to me. And um, um, I mean, I mean, some of the jokes and awkward situations have been lifted from my life. But I think the the tone and the humour and the wanting to play with the the idea that humour covers, humour covering pain 
was um, something that I realized I was really familiar with <laughs> in my own life. Not, not the same pain that she's carrying, but just kind of letting things be funny before they're sad. And, um, and then realizing that was something I wanted to play with and then building a dramatic story. In and so much about character from writing. And I know a lot of actors that like, will write themselves letters from their characters and things like that before they actually uh, perform. And I've never been that kind of actor, but, but I think it's because, because I want to write as well. But I can see that thing. Once you're actually writing things down and writing dialogue down, you learn so much more than, than um, even in real life. You know, if you write yourself, a kind of, if you just dare yourself to write something truthful that you think and it feels kind of dangerous because it's like writing a diary that you know no one's going to look in. And that's kind of what it felt like with Fleabag. I just thought, I'm just going to write what will make Vicky laugh was the first thing and would make Vicky feel seen and make Vicky uh, and having that one person in my head was really helpful but the advice I think is write write as if you're not afraid there's no reason to be afraid here just go for it and that was the line that I, I, that I constantly say to myself when I'm writing and, and acting.